everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I want to do a bit of a fig rambling. We're going to cover a number of different topics. Um, three different things I think are a bit important, and just something I'm like learning, you know, as we go along through this process of having an orchard, through this process of having so many fig trees, we learn every single day. And it's all about observation, guys. If you don't come out here and observe, you're never gonna learn. And also, you have to fail. Uh, regardless of what it is throughout life, is that if you don't fail, you're never gonna succeed. So this here, what I'm gonna show you is a failure. This is um, the experiment we talked about a couple weeks ago in our videos where we're taking our fig trees out of storage here, so out from underneath the sunroom, that are dormant, and we're putting them out here on the patio, and it's gonna be, hopefully, a more natural wake-up process. Um, this is something my buddy Mario did in Connecticut last year, and he had great success, because a lot of times when these trees wake up in the spring, they, some of them just take forever. It's just like a couple of them that are a bit, you know, they lag a bit behind, and you just wonder what are they doing you know springs here yet some of them are not awake so his idea was to bring them outside and kind of wake that pro start that process a bit sooner he thinks it has something to do with them hydrating uh, because they're outside they're getting hit with that rain um, I know the heat certainly has to do with it um, for me at least in my location maybe it's because it's been so warm here we've had a really warm April I mean, we had a really uh, warm March, and now it is in April, and even the beginning of April is going to be really warm. So I think this whole thing here is not really the best time. At least maybe this wasn't the best year to be doing such a thing, because now the trees are certainly awake. The sap is definitely flowing on these guys. Here's a really great example. See that guy? He's about ready to put out a leaf. And if he puts out a leaf and we get a frost, you can say goodbye to this portion of the growth and it may even die back even further. So I don't want to be risking that. And uh, that's one thing somebody had mentioned when we did the video weeks ago is that they said this is going to happen. Um, is that if they get hit with a frost, that new growth, the swelling growth, all that green growth. And he's right. If that growth does get hit with a frost you you basically didn't help your situation out you you heard it so um you know we just we don't want we don't want that to happen so you know it's worth experimenting i think all this stuff is really worth um talking about too and you don't want to be complacent with your methods and say oh this is the best way you know i think um, no matter what it is throughout life is that we should be open to other things and um, this is just one that here in this particular season and this particular warm spell that we've gotten and the warm spell that's going to continue because it's not just the figs that are waking up it's everything I mean the cherries are putting out buds now we've talked about this where a lot of the trees in the yard are flowering and it's only getting warmer, it seems like. I've never really experienced such a warm April before, or March. It's been continually very warm. It's been great for just being out here, but look, here's my apricots in full bloom. On the other side of the yard, the peaches are in full bloom, and the peaches in the front of the house are also almost in full bloom. Um, so we're gonna bring those trees inside, okay? That's big rambling number one is that we're gonna bring them back in underneath the sunroom and keep them there um, now I want to show you the greenhouse because the greenhouse is going berserk it's literally I haven't had this much success with the greenhouse getting them to a really nice head start like this before I think a lot of it has to do with this year I mean look at the amount of growth I can't even really get back in here and show you what's going on in here because all this growth in the front is really blocking it. But you can see this growth here, this is like six inches, seven inches long. This one back here is even longer. We're talking like six leaves already. And a lot of times when you get that six leaves and it's pretty strong growth, you can already start to pinch. And if we look down in here, I wanna give you a good example. I'm gonna see if I can really make this clear to you guys. 
there is actually two dots on these nodes and this is the first sign that you can be pinching I, the camera has got to focus for me but essentially this guy is ready to be pinched because we have two dots right above this this leaf stem here right above that is the two dots that I'm talking about when you see two dots one of them is a fig waiting to be formed and the other one is a new branch and when you ha you need to see two otherwise if you only see one you're just gonna get a branch and you're gonna think pinching doesn't work so what I'm gonna do actually I think to this tree in particular I would if I could get back in here to some others but not all of them are advanced as this you can see one right in here I think this one here is Sandrosa look at this growth this is crazy I bet if I can get a closer look I could probably pinch that as well but because we're only in um, it's like April 4th or something it's something really early and because we can actually pinch these now we're gonna form fruits in here in the next like 10 days because I'm gonna pinch and then we still have plenty of time for this tree to continue to grow to put out more growth so that we can pinch it again and uh, we'll get like two sets of main crop off of this so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna take this tip off of this particular branch not the other branches because this is the thickest strongest branch right here also I want to mention is that this is a a, uh, a franken fig which means that we have multiple varieties and you can't even tell because I can't get a better view here maybe if I come down in here see that so we've got four different branches attached to that main stem down there which is gray and the thickest one on the left, that's the variety I just pinched. That's the mother variety. And what we'll do is because the thickest one, the most vigorous ones on the left here, this one needs to be kind of held back in, in vigor to let the others come through. As you can see, here's strawberry verte grafted onto that rootstock we just looked at. And I think I could actually pinch this one as well if I give it a little look-see. Yeah, I can. Right back in there, there's two nodes. And then back on this particular node is two dots as well. So we could pinch this, but I want this particular branch to get to the same height as these. Because these are super vigorous because all that auxin is stored at the top, suppressing the growth of these other varieties so I want to make sure that these varieties keep growing and actually stop the growth on this particular branch and maybe even this one here let them form figs and then these guys will have a chance to catch up and then I can pinch these guys later and get probably a second crop off of them so that's one little thing I didn't you know I could probably have done a separate video on just that but I figured you know how would I even call that you know what is what is that name what is the name for what I just said I don't know I want to take you guys over here and this is fig rambling number three and we're looking at the in-ground trees we've kind of just planted a bunch of them um, some of them actually are waking up believe it or not and I think because perhaps they were not really dormant when I planted them also because I've taken the soil temperature here and on this side of the property this is the west side not this bed because you can see the sun is low right now it's not getting over neat over top of that house to our left so it's shading out this bed but everything back in here and along this side here and even this side on the also the west side of the property gets a lot of sun this time of the year and you can see because we get so much sun the soil warms up very quickly because the soil warms up so quickly we've got things like my apricots already in bloom but then again stone fruits they naturally do this anyway I mean I'm not even sure how much it's gonna help if I put these in a different spot in the yard but this is something that we want to watch out for is that when we're planting these things peaches and apricots and nectarines is that we don't want to put them in an area where in May, early May and, and April and March, that the soil is not getting super hot because the sun's there all day. You 
you know I would rather put them probably on that side of the house if I could do it but I I really can't there's no room for this stuff so we're kind of stuck with it but how this relates to figs is that this is perfect for figs and now I don't think that this is going to be a thing that happens every year right this is the only tree it seems like that this one's awake right this one we just planted. I'm pretty sure this one was already awake when we planted it, but you can see it's it's trying to push growth, which is not good because we still have plenty of time. We're going to get hit with a frost, I'm sure, because it's still early May, early April. We have uh, May 1st is our last frost. This tree here, LSU Huye, is probably awake as well. It looks like it's pushing Breba. This is okay. But I want to mention that this this tree over here, Ron de Bordeaux, has been here all winter time, and this guy isn't doing anything. So I don't think it's really a bad thing that they're in this location with all this heat. I think it's a great thing. I think it's fantastic because what's going to happen is that with all this excess heat earlier in the season, because we have them on the west side, they're getting hit with that sun in April which is really going to warm up that soil and because the soil is going to warm up so quickly these plants are going to be supercharged I mean super supercharged and uh, yeah I did some soil temperature readings here to kind of compare and you can see here without the rocks and yeah it is a bit in the shade right now it's showing a bit it's like 58 degrees Fahrenheit but then if I put this where the Ronde de Bordeaux was, or is, I should say, we tested it a bit before I made this video. I wanted to see what the temperature was. And this thing was showing me 65. I don't know if you guys can see that right now. So what I'm thinking here is that this just furthers my belief that the west side of the house in this particular area even though this is shaded out right now, this is probably just as good, if not better, than a south-facing exposure for the figs. And we're gonna be planting some along here as well, along this thermal mass, this little berm here that was a raised bed. We're gonna do the same thing, and these guys are gonna love that. They're gonna love that heat earlier in the season. And that's the goal, is to get these trees to kind of act like they are containers. Because these containers will fruit for me like August 1st, some of these really early varieties. Whereas my in-grounds historically, the super early ones can, or a month, a whole month later, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you look at the soil temperature, and we can do that, maybe we should do that. I can show you the soil temperature of the pot. Let's take that. Let's take the soil temperature of these pots. <clears throat> now, these, these pots will get a really nice head start, right? I mean, that's just natural because you can move these around. You can put them in full sun. Also, this pot, the roots are being exposed to sun. So this is really warming up. And you can see right in here, it's even, actually a bit lower but we may need to give it a bit more time right now it's showing itself lower than where the rocks were and that also brings up another point we're gonna give this a minute here to figure itself out but that brings up another point with those rocks is that the rocks I think are really aiding in warming up that soil and if I, this is my own property and I had land and this wasn't, you know, where there's neighbors around and people cared about what things looked like, I would have black plastic down um, on every single fig tree. I wouldn't even probably be using rocks because it kind of does a similar thing where, but I think the plastic is even better where it really warms up that soil in the spring. And again, it just kickstart these trees into like such a huge advantage. I mean, it's like, it's like compounding interest that the earlier we get this stuff, the more interest it pays off later on to the point where it's like, 
I mean, it's like it's like fertilizing a tree versus not fertilizing a tree. You know what I mean? That stuff adds up and compounds as time goes on, and it just makes more sense to feed things early in the season because it's going to pay off more later. And it's the same thing with the plastic and the heat and these rocks. So if I look down here, we're actually only getting about 61. Now let me stick it in a different one and see maybe if uh, we can stick it somewhere else. And this thing will tell us a different temperature. Still, I think 60 degrees is actually really incredible for this time of the year. 58 degrees where we had the uh, the no rocks where the raised bed was. This is actually 58 degrees. So the warmest spot right now, believe it or not, is where on in the west side of the house. But then again, that's against the house, right? There's thermal mass. There's all kinds of stuff warming that up a bit. I want to check back here because why not? And uh, yeah, the sun isn't shining on this location, but it was shining here all day. Let's see if we can get something reasonable. Okay, this is now saying it's 65. 66, it's going up. This is even warmer. It's almost at, it's like 68 degrees. This is the warmest, even warmer than the west side. <laughs> and the sun is shining. So clearly, even the, the south facing, where the sun shines all day, we've got rocks, we've got the thermal mass behind it. It's honestly, and this is only one day's worth of data, right? But this is why we're gonna plant most of our varieties here in this particular bed that I'm stepping in against this thermal mass here i mean this is the perfect really the perfect spot for these figs to give them an early head start and uh, i just think it's incredible now i want to show you one more area i want to take you guys around to the front of the house where my malta black and my improved celeste have been there for four years i've had very minimal fruit set I've had a really rough start every year of the season. They just don't do anything. They just sit there. And a lot of the reason is because I've been piling on the mulch. I got, the neighbor had cut down a tree right here, actually. And the tree service guys, I asked them, I was like, yo, can you give me that mulch? They're like, yeah, why not? So I had all this excess mulch, and I figured, oh, that'd be a great idea. Let's throw it on the fig trees. <laughs> well, all that mulch is gonna cool the soil down. So that's what we did. We put it on this raised bed here. And all this mulch has slowly been uh, obviously breaking down. But this stuff really cools down the soil. So what I want to do now, even though we have all these rocks here, let's take the soil temperature of this if we can get in here. This is a bit difficult. There's like layers and layers of rocks. Sorry guys. This one's actually showing us, I think because of these rocks, it's 65. And the sun's shining on it right now because it's a really nice time of day. But if I look at this where all these wood chips are, and I put this in here, look at it drop. It's going way down, now it's at 58. This is 10 degrees colder than it is on the south exposure. Actually, now it's looking like it's 55. It's even worse. So you can see why, it, yeah, it's going down even further, 54. You can really see the huge difference between these rocks and the mulch. Now it's down to like 53-ish. I mean, what a huge freaking difference, guys. So what I'm gonna do, and this is why I've been preaching this stuff, in all my videos is that I'm going to be basically moving all that mulch if there is any mulch on any of these trees that wake up a bit late maybe uh, just the figs no, nothing else because if the mulch is cooling down the soil 
we want that for certain things, right? We want that for the peaches and the stone fruits and the cherries and all that, right? All the apples and the pears, because they wake up early, but these figs do not. We want that soil to warm up in April. We want them to break bud. We want them to get a really head, good head start to the season. So I'm gonna move away all that mulch, let the sun even hit just the bare soil. I'm gonna obviously put down rocks if I got them on every single tree. The soil's really gonna be warmed up and we're gonna have an incredible start to the season. I'm really convinced this is really the answer of what I've been hoping for even in the two trees in the front where they have done next to, I mean, they've, I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they really haven't performed well for four years in the ground. This, I think this is their fourth year now. Malta Black and Improved Celeste, two really, really early varieties. It just doesn't make sense that they haven't done much. So that's what we need to do. And that's why I've been preaching, planting these guys also a bit higher is to get that soil temperature much warmer for these figs. So we're gonna see the results here. We're gonna see how it all plays out. But this is a little bit of a fig ramble. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of style. There's nothing really, <laughs> I don't know what to call any of the things we talked about, but um, there you got it. So. Observe, fail, and uh, you guys will be better gardeners, all right? All right, everyone, take care. If you enjoyed this one, you got this far, definitely consider following me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Check out the website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. We have a nice little blog post there. Also, um, if you don't already, I mean, like the video, right? Subscribe. Hit the bell. You know, if you guys got this far, I really appreciate it. You guys are the people who are the true fans. So no matter what it is that I say or how boring I make this and how much I just talk directly into the camera, there's certain people, that's you guys I'm talking to right now, that will uh, watch no matter what. And I definitely appreciate that. So, yeah, take care guys. Thanks again, and I'll uh, see you for tomorrow's video. All right, take care.